Hi everyone, this is Minister Margaret Rose Kuz Latigue from In or Out Ministries coming to you as promised with a new teaching that I call Back to Basics. Basically, this is these teachings are going to be foundational teachings. And there's a couple of scriptures that I want to share with you before we go into the teachings. You know, I'll, first of all, let me give you just a little um, synopsis here, how, how this all came about. You know, I was one early morning in my quiet time. You know, the Holy Spirit just ministered to me um, the word foundation. You know, I was looking at, you know, just meditating on how the world is, you know, we as Christians are so, you know, like broken. You know, so many people need prayer. Um, people are scared. People are fearful, you know, and um, and it just, it just came to me that maybe what we need is to get a solid foundation you know, Christ says, on this rock, I will build my church. And that's what came to me. And what's the rock? The rock is Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the word of God. So, and he impressed on me, the Holy Spirit impressed on me to start teaching just basic teachings because the Bible the, sorry, the, the gospel is just very, very simple, but we make it so complicated. So maybe if we had, we were well rooted and planted, and if we had a good foundation, we would not be easily broken. So let's take into consideration um, Matthew 24 and 35, and it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word my words will never pass away. Second Timothy 2.15 says to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So brethren, as Christians, we don't have to be ashamed to call ourselves a Christian. And then next scripture that was given to me as an introduction is Proverbs 4 and 7 which says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get an understanding we need to understand the word because there's so many different <coughs> versions of people putting in their own ideas into the word of God, but we cannot change the word of God. You know, we have been taught so many different variations of the word that is a mix with emotions, but we cannot. The word is the word and that is it. We have to stand on the word of God. Jeremiah 23, 29 says, Does not my word burn like fire, says the Lord? Is it not like a mighty hammer that smashes the rock to pieces? What rock is he talking about here? He is talking about the rock of our hearts, that hardened heart that doesn't want to love. It's the word that breaks the rock of the heart. Hallelujah. And there is one scripture that I want to add in here. And before I, I add, in, add it in here, it just came to mind. I'm just researching it now. Um, it says the word, basically the word corrects, it rebukes. Um, so it's, I'll tell you, 2 Timothy 3.16, 3, wonderful. It says all scripture, listen to this, is inspired by God. And it's profitable for teaching, here it is, for rebuking, for correcting, for, for training. Here it is. For correcting, for training in righteousness. So that's what the word of God is. 
let the amplified version says all scripture is god breathed which is given by divine inspiration and it's profitable for instruction profitable means you will profit from it you will gain sorry gain from it for instruction for conviction to convict us that we have done wrong or sin for correction correcting us if correcting us if we have done something wrong and to restore us back to obedience for training in righteousness that's learning to live in conformity to god's will both publicly and privately behaving honorable with personal integrity and moral courage now what it says we don't like to be corrected you know, laws are being made to to accommodate sin, and that is wrong. At the end of the day, we have to go back to our basics, which is the true Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Hallelujah. So we, I will be teaching from a series called Kingdom Character. It is a, um, it, it is a, it includes four books. Each book has about eleven lessons and it was written by um, bishop tony owens uh, from new destiny christian center so i will be teaching from that book if you wish to get the book i will include the website somewhere on this video here um, <coughs> that you could go to and order it if you're in the u.s if you're out of the u.s just let me know with a small donation as small as five dollars i will get the book for you and i will cover the cost of getting it to you overseas as those that are in the caribbean or whichever part of the world you are africa europe asia wherever you are i will send it to you okay so this particular um series of lessons starts with the godhead because the, the Christ is the head of the church and we are the body. We make up the body. We we make up the body Christ in us. You know, as Christians, we are too broken. Do you know there are over 33,000 plus, 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 plus Christians denomination? I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. We should all be one body, one board, one body on one accord. Christ in us. We are so fragmented and broken. We should all make up one body. One body. Look at look at your body. Take a look at your body. It's all one body. Whether it's your foot connected to your 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 leg, connect by your knee, connected to your thigh, connected to your hip, connected to your torso, connected to your neck, your arms. It's all connected, but we are one body. We should not be broken. But guess what breaks us? You know, doctrine. This doctrine breaks us up. Well, you know what? Out the window with doctrine. Doctrine is out the window. We stand on the truth, which is the word of God. And that is what I stand for. That is what Margaret Rose stands for. The word of God. Don't bring no doctrine to me. Or don't tell me, you know, I've had some people come up to me and say, Oh, your religion. What? Aren't we the same? But we are Christians. Not because you go to this church and I go to that church that all of a sudden I have a religion and you have a religion. We are the same. We are the same, and it's time that we start thinking alike as Christians. Christ in us, we are the same. So the beginning of this teaching, the first three lessons are very important. And I, and I, and I ask, please, that you try not to miss a lesson. Um, I've set this up via um, audio. So you could, you have, you know, a whole week to listen to this on your own time. Now, this lesson will be a little longer because I'm doing all this little introduction. Um, but um, the first three lessons of this book, um, which is the first book, um, is the Godhead, which is God the Father, God, who is Jesus, God um, the Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So this lesson is going to be um, about the, the Father. So, you know, before I come on to start the lesson, um, I just listened to a teaching here, which is just fantastic. The first, the first, first, first line in the Bible of Genesis says, In the beginning, God. Full stop. In the beginning, God. 
And that is how we have to base our whole life. In the beginning, God. So in the beginning of everything is God. In the beginning of our, our marriage, God. In the beginning of our relationships, God. In the beginning of our job, God. In the beginning of everything, our career, God. In the beginning of our money, God. In the beginning of everything, God. That's it, God. And God makes up three persons in one. So God the Father is the head of the Trinity. Okay, so what is a father? The Hebrew word for father is Ab, or Ob, meaning chief pat patrimony and principal. The Greek word for father is Pater, meaning father or parent. The Merriam-Webster's College Dictionary 10th edition defines father as a man who has begotten a child, God the first person of the Trinity or one that originates or institutes. A large part of our society does not reflect the order of family and that God had originally given. Society has tried to remove every vestige of who a father is, his purpose and function in a family. Through this perversion of the father's role in the family, the devil has tried to destroy the way we relate to our heavenly father, the living God. And many of you can and can attest to that. So Jesus instructions. Although many people in our society do not have earthly fathers that they communicate with in this life or who have been an active part of their lives, our Heavenly Father desires you to talk with Him. And in Matthew 6, 1 and 18, Jesus teaches us that we are to talk with God who is our Father and it reads. So I'm going to go to um, my... Hold on here. I'm going to go to another version in the New King James Version. And it says, so Matthew 6, 1 and 18, and which we know... Matthew 6, just bear with me here, please. Matthew, and you could go to your Bibles also, follow along with me, and you want to be interactive, okay? You want to be interactive. I'm just so excited to just share, you know, um, my foundation. Because, brethren, let me tell you something. I am well rooted and planted. I am well rooted and planted. And I'll tell you what, and I said, no devil in hell is going to take me off my, my, my foundation. Okay. So it says here, Matthew 6, 1 and 18. Take heed that you, you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your father in heaven. Here it is. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as a hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. As shortly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. And of course, many of us know this prayer. Our Father. Our Father. That's all of us. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give and sorry and forgive us our debts or we say forgive us our trespasses as we forgive 
our debtors or as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Brethren, that is very, very important. And I will leave this alone here because we will do a class on forgiveness. So moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may ap appear to men to be fasting. You know, as we say, bosta. Where I come from, Dominica, we say bosta kakasesh. Bosta, boasting. You know, I'm most holy, you know, so I'm fasting, you know. I'm doing the Daniel fast and whatever. You want everybody to know. No, no, no. Don't be like the hypocrites. Uh, shortly I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Look good. Look good. Look refreshed. You understand? Put a little face powder. Put a light lip gloss on. Put whatever you do. Look good. You know, put a nice clean shirt on. Shave or whatever. Now these days men don't shave. Or whatever you do to make you look good. So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in a secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Hallelujah. So over and over again, Jesus taught us to address God as our father. He did not want us to see God as the intimidating person, person that many in the Old Testament viewed him as. Rather, he wanted us to see him as our tender, loving father. When we look at the Old Testament, we find that no one addressed God as father. Actually, only in one place is God referred to as father, which is in Isaiah 9 and 6. And it reads, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, that's the shoulder of the son, which is Jesus, and his name, that is Jesus, shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You see what's going on here. We are, this scripture is showing us that Jesus is in the Father and the Father is in Jesus. They're all one. Although they had this scripture, they yet could not understand the relationship that God was trying to establish with them of the everlasting Father and his children. Adam was the son of God or a son of God, because he was created directly by the hand of God. Humanity as a whole after Adam and Eve came through procreation to beget offspring, of, offspring sorry, of other humans. Thus, humanity is God's creation, no matter how you slice it or dice it. But not everyone is God's children. Here is brethren. In John 8, 41 and 44, Jesus told some people that they were of their father, the devil. <laughs> you see, I know many of you. I didn't know that. Let me tell you, these teachings opened my eyes and I just want to share with you. Because some people, you know, want to, uh, you know. How did she get to be so wise, so quick, and so understanding, and so, you know, because of these teachings, brethren, and that's where we all need to get. We all need to get. We don't need to hide it. Oh, I have it, and you, God gave it to all of us. So I will bring it to you, because sometimes we don't have the time, or the enemy attacks us from going into a word, you know, preventing us from learning. You know, when, when I had to, when the Lord prompted me to go to ministry school and the first year I went, I could, I, there was something that came up. I, I couldn't go. I had to wait. I waited a whole year before I actually went, you know, to, to, to school, you know, but the word is right there. So he says in um, John 8, 41 to 44, and he says, 
I'm going to be reading it from my, yes. He, then he said, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Hear this. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for, love me for I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he said, he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and a father of it. So Satan is a father of all lies, brethren. We become true sons and daughters of God when we receive him. John 1, 12 and, and, and 13 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Wow! Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah! Can you believe that? When we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, hallelujah, we become a son of God. Hallelujah. We are drafted into this as, as children of God. We are adopted as children of God. I mean, this is so beautiful. You know, it breaks my heart how people treat Jesus or they refer to him as just another man or just a prophet. You know, Jesus is powerful. I mean, if it wasn't for Jesus, uh, we won't, we, this whole planet maybe would have been annihilated, you know, totally wiped out. So we must be born again to become sons and daughters. Jesus explained to Nicodemus that man needed a new birth, which constituted their spirit being born by the hand of God. John 3, 1 to 8. The act of our spirits being born by the Spirit, God the third person, gives us a right to be called sons and daughters of God because we are created, sorry, we are being created directly by the hand of God as Adam and Eve were. In Luke 3, 23 and 38, it gives the lineage of Joseph, Jesus' earthly father, which goes back to Adam. Verse 37 and 38 says, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Mal Malalil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Hallelujah. Adam was the son of God because he was directly created from God's hand. Upon your acceptance of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are recreated in spirit by the hand of God. And you no longer are just his creation, but his child, his son or daughter. Wow, isn't that so beautiful? So learning how to be his children. Again, Jesus often taught using the title of Father for God to help us truly understand our relationship with God. To learn how to be obedient and faithful sons and daughters, we must understand our Father's ways and desires for us. The first thing that you need to do is change your view of who God is. You must move from the thought that God is some giant, intimidating being looking down on this little earth or looking to send you to hell for every mistake to we have to change that to thoughts of a loving father. When you hear the word father, it should have the meaning of someone who is approachable. Your God, father, is approachable. You can come to him at any time. Jesus gave us the Lord's prayer, showing us that God is not some distant potentate who is not approachable by mere humans, rather than God is a father who always has an ear and a heart for his children. Throughout the scriptures, Jesus teaches us to address God as father. A father wants nothing but good for his children. 
often we distrust human fathers because they have let us down in one way or another. We see shadows of what they should and could be, but often our expectations are not met. God is the only one who can father you perfectly. Please understand that perfectly does not mean that he does, he does everything that you want. Rather know that perfectly means he does what's best for you. God has nothing but good intentions for his children. He has plans for you that far exceed your greatest desires because he loves you and want nothing but the best for you. Will you trust him? Beloved child of God, you can trust your heavenly father. You must show that you have faith in him, which means that you depend on him and trust him. You rely on him and believe him above all in all things. Your father wants and desires to give you good things. His, his child, we, his children, Matthew 7, 7 to 11 says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh seek, everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knock it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you, whom, if a son ask him for bread, you will give him a stone? Or if he ask for a fish, you will give him a serpent? If then we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children how much more shall our father in heaven give us good things if we ask him natural fathers like to give their children all their experiences all their wisdom and all things that belong to them that are available to their children as they warrant it and are mature enough to receive it god wants the same and even more for us his children our Father has a kingdom and it is, it is his good pleasure or desire to give it to us. To give him us his whole kingdom, all that is good. Luke 12 and 32 says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Why are so many of God's children seeking provisions from men when we all when when all we have to do is ask our heavenly father who will give us every provision that we need for it's all in his kingdom the baptism of the holy spirit is a promise from the father that he also wants to give us acts 1 and 4. our heavenly father does not want you to be anxious or worry about having your your needs met for if he takes care of the birds and flowers how much more does he want to take care of you and, 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 and or us and meet our needs? Matthew 6, 25, 34 says, Therefore I say to you, take no thought of your life, what you will eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is it not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the falls of the air, for they, they sow not. Neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And not us, and not ye, that's, that's King James Version, not more better than they. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, they do not spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, that Solomon was the richest king, in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these flowers. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye or clothe us, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying what we shall eat or what we shall drink or where or how we shall be clothed. For after all these things do the, do the Gentiles seek. For your father knoweth what you have need of and you need of all things so our father knows what we need but seek ye first that's my favorite scripture brethren matthew 6 and 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you 
including things you, to eat, your roof over your head, clothes on your back, whatever you need, money, whatever you need, children, whatever you need, a husband, whatever you need. If you seek God first and his kingdom and righteousness, all these things will be added unto us. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So today is enough. Do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. So our Heavenly Father does not want us to worry, rather to seek Him, to seek after Him, and in doing so, He will meet all our needs. So God gives a commandment to honor our mothers and fathers that our days might be long in the land. This is very, very important because we find many children are rebellious. They are rude to parents. They don't respect parents. They are ungrateful. We see it every day. Every day. Hear this. Honor thy, our parents. God gives a commandment to honor our mothers and fathers that our days might be long in the land. Why? Because our relationship with our parents is symbolic of our relationship with God in which our parents nurture, love, protect, guide, and instruct us for our, for, for our benefit until we are adults. Many children forget that and are very ungrateful. A lot of children don't even, don't even give parents, uh, at least mothers, you know, thanks at least or to just to, to think of the nine months and the pain that they bore to actually birth them. Brethren, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Our submission to our earthly parents help us to understand and submit to our Heavenly Father who nurtures, loves, protects, guides, and instructs us throughout our lives for our benefit. Our natural parents are a training ground, here it is, in submission to parental authority that God our Father gives us throughout life. But guess what? No matter how we treat our, our Papa Father, he still loves us and he sent his son to forgive us even if we are ungrateful. What a wonderful father. Many of us want to, you know, disown our children, but not our papa, not our father in heaven, our Abba Father. So the prodigal children, in Luke 15, 11 and 24, we have the story of the prodigal son and it reads, This story was to show the heart of God towards all those who have walked away and did not live for him. You know, this, this, this scripture um, has ministered to me so much about, you know, the prodigal son. It has helped me to, to, as a parent, to deal with my children, you know, to deal with children that have been, you know, rebellious or even people in my life that has been rebellious or has not done right, you know. Many who sit in the church today are prodigal because they take their inheritance, they give talents, finances, and strength, and waste them on the world. And that has a lot to do with um, um, the artists. They waste it on the world, not realizing and not being grateful to God for God giving them that talent. They didn't get it by this, themselves. They were born with that talent. They were created with that talent by the Creator, their Father, their you know, by God. This is especially visible with singers who are raised in the church and then go waste their talents singing for money and the applause of people rather to lift up the name of God in praise and song or come back to him. Jesus declared to people that he and the Father are one, yet the Father is greater than he is. John 10 30 says, I and my Father are one. That's Jesus saying that. In John 4, 14, 8, and 10, Jesus gives an explanation of the oneness of he and the Father, and it reads, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And now I say, to, um, though then, show us the Father. And now you're saying to show us the Father? Believe not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So he's telling him to believe though, not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. 
So Jesus is saying he's in the Father, the Father is in, in him, and the Father is in Jesus, and he does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Every attribute that they saw in Jesus was the same attributes of the Father. And in the next lesson, we're going to study about Jesus. Guess what? Jesus is in us and we are in Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, this is just mind-blowing. Okay, so Jesus is the only way to the Father. Contrary to popular belief, which is, the, and I'm almost done, man. I'm almost done. Contrary to popular belief, which is that, that there are many God's ways to God, there is only one way, and that is, that is through Jesus Christ. John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not man cometh, no man, sorry, cometh unto the Father, but by me. Why is Jesus the only way to the Father? Because your sins bars the way without Jesus. We are privileged to be able to come into the presence of the Father because of the blood of Jesus that washed our sins away. Because sin separates us from our Father. No sin can enter the presence of the Father. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Jesus shed his blood, remitted our sins, giving us the right to come to the Father. And why is this so? Because it is what it is. This is the constitution for this planet because God the Creator made it like that. So our Father is a righteous God who loves the world. Our Heavenly Father is righteous, sinless, and perfect in this reference. John 17 and 25 says, O oh, righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Although the world, the people, did not know God, our Heavenly Father, he yet loved the world, every person that was ever born or would ever be born into it, all seven billion, seven billion and every single one that will be ever born on this planet. When he sent his only begotten son to die, it was for every soul that would ever live on it. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved you before you ever received him as a father. How great his love is for you and all the world. Your heavenly father will honor you when you serve Jesus. John 12, 26 says, If a man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. God, God does not honor title, family, lineage, or education. Rather, he honors our service unto his son. What have you done in Jesus' name today? What have you done in Jesus' name? It doesn't matter how money, how much money you have, how big your ministry is. It doesn't matter. God does not honor that. It is about a relationship. Above every, everything else, your, father, your Heavenly Father wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to take time out to speak. He wants you to take time out to speak with Him. Share Him your thoughts. Share with Him your thoughts, your heart your desires and tell him of your love for him. Ask him his concerns and what he wants to talk about. Yes, God will talk back to you if you are willing to listen. That's what happened to me that early morning when he told me to teach these foundational classes, to go back to basics. I, lis I listen to God in the morning. That's my listening time, my quiet time. One last point, and that is you should pray to God asking in Jesus' name. John 16, 23 and 24 says, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be fulfilled. So you pray to the Lord. You pray to God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So this is the end of the first lesson. The next lesson will be about Jesus. The second part, the second body, or the, sorry, the second person in the Trinity in the Godhead. So I just want to thank you for listening today. And... Um, if you have any questions, you could reach out to me whichever way um, through WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Instagram Messenger, 
um, you want to uh, subscribe to the YouTube, my YouTube channel and also click on the bell so you could get the notifications. Um, if you missed out on the class and you haven't been able to hear it for the week, you can always go back and please share this message. Share this message. So Father, we just want to thank you for the word that has gone out. And Father, we, I pray that it has, um, and everyone that has listened to this word will not just be a hero of the word, but will be also a doer of the word. Please hide that word in their hearts, Father God. Make it be part of their DNA, Father God, so we can build a strong foundation in you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So thank you, everyone. I love you and shalom. Good night.